What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about Scrapper. Um, this was another new uh, support class that was introduced with the May 11th balance update. Um, I just recently started playing it these past few weeks. Obviously I've been dedicating a lot of my time to Staff Mirage if you've seen some of my previous guides or videos. Um, but I've always been a, a hardcore NG player. Uh, Hollow Smith is one of my favorite DPS classes, and the chance to use a hammer was something that I just couldn't give up. So uh, today, this is going to be a two-part series. Uh, this first video is going to be on the DPS Quickness Scrapper, and I will make one in the near future on the Heal Quickness Scrapper. So uh, we're going to go over the builds, uh, the traits, uh, the different utilities and skills that we use, uh, different rotation uh, priorities, different things like that, how to give quickness, of course, amongst other things, uh, just beginning to end, uh, beginner to advanced. So, uh, right off the bat, let's just jump in right into the gear. Here's my lovely scrapper with that lovely hammer that is such a rare tool to use and, uh, is one of the main reasons why I love scrapper so much. Uh, we are going to be using the standard berserker gear that just about every power class uses, right? Uh, it's going to be almost all berserker the only thing that's going to change in this is since we are trying to give quickness we are going to be giving uh our some accessories here some of our trinkets are going to be diviners the backpack and the amulet are still berserker but your accessories and your rings those are going to be diviners uh, those will give us enough concentration um to get to a safe point with our quickness um, the runes are going to be scholar runes just like every other power class and the sigils are going to be force and concentration so between the diviner trinkets and the concentration sigil we will get ourselves up to a nice clean 36.4 uh, which makes it relatively comfy to give quickness um, as always if you feel that you are uh, still learning the build there's nothing wrong with bringing more wound duration you can do that through food and utilities um, but 36 is enough for us to give full-time quickness so uh, that's definitely a good sweet spot it's a little bit tight um, but it is definitely enough that you uh, over cap by a couple of seconds every rotation so that you you don't have to worry about dropping it um, so it's, pre it's pretty comfy in that respect um, that's about it for the gear so let's go ahead and move on to the traits and such we are going to be using explosives firearms and of course scrapper for our three trees um, Right off the bat, the first one is Explosive Entrance. This is great for just starting the fight with a little bit of Vuln and a little bit of damage. Um, this also gets reset every time we dodge roll. Uh, obviously, you're not going to want to be dodge rolling a lot because that is technically a DPS loss, right? You're not, you're not attacking if you're dodging, but at least we don't lose as much as some other classes by dodging. Uh, we get some free damage there. Um, next, we're going to be taking the third one, which is Glass Cannon. Uh, just as the name sounds in most games right glass cannon means more damage so that's all this is once we get the boss to 75 percent hp or less I i'm sorry i said that incorrectly uh if we are above 75 percent hp we're doing 10 percent more damage uh kind of it it's very similar to scholar runes in that respect right so if our healers are doing a good job keeping our scholar room up time we are naturally getting this as well um, which is a little bit easier for Scrapper, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, our next one is Steel Packed Powder. This is one of the main reasons why engineers can keep uh, complete vulnerability uptime on their own. Every explosive uh, that we use applies vulnerability. So uh, things like grenades, which shoot out. Uh, grenade Barrage shoots out six grenades. Each one's an explosion. That's six vulnerability right there alone. And we have lots of grenades, we have lots of explosions. Uh, there's another one, you know, there's another one over here uh, in our mortar kit that's an explosion. You know, there's explosions all over the place. So this is an explosion. We have lots and lots of that stuff. So uh, this will make it very, very easy for us to vulnerability cap. Uh, so with most groups, if you have a hollow, a scrapper, or a dragon hunter, you don't have to worry about vulnerability. It will be capped. Uh, so that's it's a wonderful thing that we bring. Uh, next is Explosive Temper. This makes it so that we just get some more Furiosity, which increases our crit damage, right? So 
Uh, that is again done through our explosions. This is pretty easy to cap as long as you're doing your rotation properly. Each one lasts 10 seconds. We have tons of explosions in this build by default. Next uh, is shape charge. Uh, this is just something that we instantly make easy for ourselves. Uh, we get a little bit more damage per vulnerability, and we ourselves are crit capping vulnerability, right? Or, or I'm sorry, condi capping vulnerability, so we get that extra damage there as long as we make sure we keep phone up. And last but not least, Big Boomer, uh, which makes it so, uh, you know, we do even more damage, because why not? <laughs> um, this won't be active for the very first hit but after that as long as the boss has less health than you this is active so easy life right there as well as getting some extra heal every time we use an explosion which we do a lot right so uh, this helps with our sustain in a lot of nice ways so very very good tree for Vuln for extra damage modifiers definitely not going to get rid of any of this stuff next we have firearms uh, the first one is sharpshooter this gives us uh, some bleeding, not really relevant to us, right? But it's free damage. Uh, if you're playing a Condi NG, this will help a lot more. But getting bleed on crits is always, a, you know, free damage, not complaining. Uh, next is high caliber. This is one of the reasons we can crit cap so easily. As long as you are in melee range, you will have 15% extra crit. Very, very useful. And you should be in melee range because you should be stacked with your group so you can get boons, right? So great stuff right there. And next, um, whenever the target is bleeding, we also get increased crit chance. Uh, since this guy does not have an internal cooldown, there's a very, very good chance that we are keeping bleed on the target, even if no one in the group is. So this will be up pretty much all the time. So between these two traits, we get 25% crit chance right off the bat, uh, which makes it very, very easy to crit cap on, on uh, Engineer. Uh, and it's one of the few classes who don't need spotter. Um, if you are going full DPS, uh, since we are not full DPS, we're, since we're taking Diviners, we do need Spotter to crit cap, uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, next is No Scope. This gives us 50% Fury uptime by itself. Since we are uh, bringing some boon duration, it's actually a little bit more. It's looking like uh, 60 to 70% Fury uptime. And... Um, it gives us more furiosity as well right that 150 furiosity so uh, this is a great great ability um for not having to worry about if our druid's not giving us fury or anything like that we have 60 percent of our own so we're good to go right there as well as more furiosity and then uh serrated steel again this is for condies mostly our uh condies will last i'm sorry our bleeding specifically will last longer, which ties in with this first trait, right? So that we can make sure that we always have that increased crit chance. That's not going to help us as much since we are not Condi ourselves. And last but not least, modified ammunition. This makes it so that the more conditions the boss has, the more damage we do. Um, when you're benching, uh, we always do the standard 10 boons, which you can see right up here. Uh, this is also on the Snow Crows website, the standard 10 conditions that you put on the boss so that this can be averaged out across benches. Uh, but in raids, there's a lot of times you're going to be above 10, so it's even more damage, right? So it's good to have. And then, of course, last but not least, the scrapper trait line. Uh, the ability to use hammers. Wonderful, wonderful thing, right? We love it. This is the main reason why we all play scrapper, because we get hammers. And then um, our access to gyros. This is how we are going to be giving quickness. If we can't use gyros, we can't use quickness. And we also get function gyro, which uh, is our last F skill. This is a great skill for utility. Unfortunately, as a DPS, we cannot use this much for utility. This will be a source of some quickness, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but if you are playing heal scrapper, this is a great move for helping uh, to pick up downed teammates and such. It basically does what uh, Search and Rescue does or um, the bubble on Inspiration Chrono or anything like that. It just slowly ticks Revive on its own. Uh, but it does increase the cooldown. So this has the potential to lose you quickness if people are downing inside your function gyro. Uh, because it will increase the cooldown and you will give less quickness. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you want... If the DPS want their quickness to be solid, tell them not to go down so that you don't have to waste your function gyro. Makes sense, right? 
Um, anyway, moving on, we have gyroscopic acceleration. This is going to tie in with our other trait, which will make it so we can give quickness. This makes it so well abilities give super speed. Our wells are our gyros. So I can have some gyros here right now. You can see they're all tagged with well, which means that they all give super speed, which is great. Super speed is something that can't be beat with cripple or slow array and stuff like that. And now uh, this last patch that they just sent live on June 8th made it so that we can stack this up to 10 seconds. So it's pretty much guaranteed at this point to have uh, very, very close to full super speed uptime in your sub just by doing your rotation, which is fabulous. Um, then we have speed of synergy using a heal skill, grand super speed as well, which is how we get self super speed here and how we get super speed, double super speed on our medical gyro because of this lovely, lovely trait. So wonderful, wonderful move. Next, we have object in motion. Um, which is another great ability uh, because it decreases, I mean, I'm sorry, it increases our damage as well as long as we have super speed or swiftness or stability and those stacks. So this can be 15% more damage if we have all of those. Obviously, stability is not really guaranteed, unfortunately, and we have no solid way to give us stability outside of like bulwark. But if we take bulwark, then we are losing damage because bulwark doesn't do any damage right so uh swiftness and super speed should be guaranteed so you're at least getting 10 percent with the occasional boost up to 15 percent which is very nice um we have impact savant uh this makes it so we lose 180 vitality so your hp is lower than if you are playing hollow you notice that um but it also makes us incredibly tanky because 15% of all the damage we do turns into shield, turns into barrier, which you can see uh, very, very easily once you start attacking something, right? Look, I already have 4K barrier, 5K barrier, 6K barrier. You gain so much barrier off of this, it makes you really, really tanky, and it's very, very nice. This is one of the best things about Scrapper, um, and if you want to tank, uh, DPS quickness scrapper is a very safe choice because of this move. It makes it incredibly difficult for you to die as long as you're continuing to do damage. And then last, but most importantly, kinetic accelerators. This makes it so every time we give super speed, we give quickness. And this is how we become a quickness scrapper. This tied in with the ability to give super speed with our gyros because of gyroscopic acceleration makes it so that we do need gyros on our hotbar it's a must so uh, but these are our sources of quickness i don't have quickness on me right now you can see the moment i press my heal skill now i have quickness and this will proc again at the end and i got some more quickness heal, uh, my heal skill in particular has two procs which makes it very very efficient um, but you are going to need to take multiple sources of super speed to give enough quickness which is why the you can see three of them on my bar right now. So that's the build. Uh, it's going to be explosives, 323, three, firearms, 332, three, three, and scrapper, 132. And you're good to go. So moving on to our skills, our weapon skills, our utilities, our F skills, uh, we have the lovely hammer. And since we are an engineer, we cannot weapon swap. So this is all we have to worry about, our hammer. Um, our first auto attack chain is not too bad it gives us might and on the second and third hit it also applies vulnerability and on the third hit it also applies more might so um, you are very good at giving yourself might and uh, it makes it very very comfy for yourself even if your druid is not particularly on their game for whatever reason uh, there's a good chance you're still capping might because of how much you give to yourself um, unfortunately, our hammers is a very slow attack compared to a lot of others, especially that last one. You can see that massive aftercast. It's pretty brutal. Um, but overall, it's still going to be our main source of damage. That is our auto attack. I am taking grenade kit, but I am not going to be using this as, as my auto attack. I'm going to be using uh, the standard hammer auto attack. 
Next is Electro Whirl. Uh, this is an explosion, so of course it causes durability. It's also a reflect, it's also a whirl. It's also a good chunk of damage. We're going to be using this basically on cooldown. Uh, we're connecting it with our auto attacks. We'll have a little bit of a chain that we do, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the future, but this is wonderful amounts of damage. Uh, next is Rocket Charge. Um, this is not something we will be using for damage. It takes way too long for it to finish completely, but it is a three-step leap. One, two, three. And the great thing about this move is that it has multiple leap finishers in it, which means that if we combo this with a lightning field, say my spare capacitor, I get dazing strikes, which is free CC. This is a great source of CC. If you know you can drop a lightning uh, field and then you can uh, rocket charge into it, you can get a ton of CC out of that. So that's a great, great move that you're just going to leave there. And in case you need CC, if you know a CC bar is about to come up, you might want to save your spare capacitor since it does have days on it as well. Right, that first pulse applies days. Um, it leaves a lightning field, and then you can rocket into it. Uh, you also have a lightning field right here, uh, which is another great source of uh, CC from there as well. Those, and then your function gyro is a lightning field. So these three abilities are lightning fields that you can combo with your rocket charge for some solid CC. Um, but like I said, this is not a DPS skill. This is something we're using for CC only. So don't worry about pressing it unless you want to do CC. Uh, next is shock shield. This again is not a DPS skill. It is CC only. Um, if vulnerability is looking bad for whatever reason, which it shouldn't be because you are giving a ton of vuln yourself, this is a great source of burst foam. Um, it applies 10 vulnerability right off the bat. It also applies barrier per hit, and it also is a block. So it's a great utility skill if you feel like you're gonna take some big damage or if you're tanking and you need to block something particularly dangerous, this is a great ability. And it will keep you going just fine. Uh, it will give you a ton of barrier on demand and it does damage while you're blocking. There's not a lot of blocks that do that, so it's a wonderful ability. Uh, just more solid utility, just like Engineer is so darn good at. Next we have Thunderclap. This is a great ability. Um, it applies a bunch of vulnerability, again, because that's <laughs> we're so good at applying vulnerability. It has some CC on it. It is another lightning field, and it does a lot of damage. So this is a great ability that we're basically going to be using on cooldown as well. It's a uh, 1200 range, so you can use this from across the map, basically. It's got a really cool AoE uh, marker, if I do say so myself, and it looks fucking fabulous. Look at that. It's great. So this is a great ability that we will be using on cooldown as well. Um, next, we have our utility skills. We are going to be taking Medic Gyro. This makes it so that we get two applications of super speed for this gyro. That is very, very nice. If you're playing Heal Scrapper, you'll know that you'll be taking Med Kit, which only applies one application of quickness, one application of super speed. So this really makes it a lot more efficient for us so that we can take a grenade kit instead of another gyro. So this is something that you cannot change if you are giving quickness. If you are doing DPS, you can make this AED since AED has such great uh, utility potential um, as well as extra CC. But if you are giving quickness, you need to take medic gyro. Two applications is too good to give up. Um, next, I take grenade kit. I like it on my first slot. You can put it anywhere, of course. Um, and then going into our grenades, we're never really going to use one. It's uh, since we're going to be auto attacking with our hammer, we don't have to worry about that. But two, four, and five are skills that we are going to be using pretty much on cooldown. Two is going to combo very well. I'll explain that later with our rotation. And four and five, we're going to use every time we go into grenade kit and we see that they're up. Um, but they, they, they can't really fit into a static rotation. So just if you go into grenade kit to use two and you see in four and five up, you can use those as well. Three is not enough damage to use. Uh, it has blind on it though. So if you're fighting ads, uh, like in trio or in any fight where you're really scared that ads are going to hit you, feel free to use that. You also have another one in mortar kit 
flash shell, so you have a good chunk of blindness that you can apply if adds are particularly deadly for whatever reason. That's, But that's pure utility. We're not using that for damage. We're using 2, 4, and 5. So keep them in mind. These are all multi-hit explosions, which means that we are doing a ton of vulnerability with our grenades. So very, very easy to crit cap, as well as some conditions, some chill, uh, d different things like that. So... Uh, on from there, we have our Blast Gyro. Um, this gives our allies might. Uh, it drops a fire field, and it also blasts that fire field, which is, this is one of the very, very few moves uh, I can think of that has a combo field and a finisher. And it uh, it procs its own combo field, <laughs> which is fabulous, right? So this is pulsing might, um, and then it will blast the fire field for even more might. So this by itself gives 11 stacks of might which is very nice for supplementing your sub. Uh, of course, it's only going to be five man, but it's pretty nice. Um, one thing to note about this um, is that it is also a huge launch. It's a 600 launch. Um, this can be potentially uh, very, very troll if there's ads that you're trying to kill and someone yanks them in with their focus or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Reaper, Greatsword 5, or anything that the, that's pull, they yank in those ads, and then Blast Gyro goes off, it's going to launch them a mile away, <laughs> and you're not going to be able to cleave those ads. So you have to be kind of conscientious when you're using this ability. Um, it does have the ability to troll your group if you're trying to kill ads, but it's still a source of super speed, aka it's a source of quickness. So you do need to be pressing this on cooldown. This does not have a specific spot in the rotation. This is just basically used on cooldown. Uh, next is Shredder Gyro. This is some more free damage. Um, it is also a Whirl Finisher, so it's great for comboing with other things. It throws out 12 Whirl Finishers, which is a lot. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, our main source of combo with this is going to be our Medic Gyro, which drops a Water Field. Uh, and then we're going to be whirling in that to giving out just some free healing. Um, you know, if you get it in a fire field or something else that someone else is doing, that's great. Or your own fire field, that's great. You'll be able to do some more damage. Um, but the most useful thing we can do is do uh, Medic Gyro into Shredder Gyro so that we can get some healing out. If you do it in a lightning field, it's going to be doing, um, what is it, Dazing Bolts or something like that? Which, uh, these apply vulnerability. What's it? What is it? Brutal bolts. These apply vulnerability. We already apply a ton of vulnerability, as we've discovered all earlier, so it doesn't really matter. It's not something that's super important for us. Um, it, it's much, much more valuable to put into a water field or a fire field or anything like that um, versus putting it into one of the lightning fields that we have. So we're going to be using this in conjunction with our medic gyro, since they're both 20 second cooldowns. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more here when I get into the rotation. And last but not least, Mortar Kit. We really don't have a better choice. Uh, let me reset real quick so that I can actually press the arrow key. We don't really have a better choice of Elite, unfortunately, right? Um, you could probably take Sylvan Hound, I guess, if you're a Silvari or something along those sorts. Uh, you can't really use Sneak Gyro. Uh, and... The main problem with this is that it stealths your party, and this can really, really hamper uh, your party's DPS. You can really troll your teammates with stealth with sneak gyro, um, especially if they are a thief. They're gonna get really mad at you when they suddenly do a skill, <laughs> um, or if they're a mirage that's trying to ambush, or if they're a hollow. Hollows do not press their auto attack; they let them naturally rotate. So. Uh, by stealthing them, they will stop attacking, and they probably won't realize it for a couple of seconds, and they will literally not be doing damage because you stealth them. So um, this is something that we really, really can't take. It would be a great source of quickness uh, just for some more quickness, but stealthing your teammates are bad, so this is not something we will take. Ignore it. Um, it has some utility skill uh, to it, like in... Uh, spirit run you can use it to stealth past ads and stuff like that right but we're not using this in fights if you need to do dps you will troll your teammates don't use it um you can use supply trait if you want to be lazy which i do sometimes um <laughs> but you don't know that but uh mortar kit's going to be generally our best choice we have some free healing with elixir shell we have some free damage with poison gas shell 
um, if you need chill and blind for whatever reason those are on demand and of course our mortar shot which we're basically not going to be using because like I said earlier we're gonna be auto attacking with our hammer so uh, so you will be using two um, if you have nothing better to do and then you can get some for utility out of these other skills but this is a very low priority skill for us in general and we really have nothing better to put there so mortar kit it is and then going back to, uh, down our tool belts we have a self heal with reconstru reconstruction field um, I'm sorry a self protection I said that wrong I apologize a self protection with reconstruction field um, as well as giving protection to our allies so um, if you have some downtime there's nothing wrong with pressing this button just to pulse out a little bit of protection or if for whatever reason your teammates are not doing good protection there's nothing wrong with tossing out a little bit of protection but uh, in general this is something that we're not going to be touching it's just um, some self super speed and protection um, grenade barrage this is going to be used basically on cooldown it's a good chunk of damage it's a good chunk of vulnerability it's a great ability um, bypass coating this will be used on cooldown this is our only instant ability this does not interrupt anything else that you're doing so just press it on cooldown as long as you're on your party because this gives super speed which means that with blast gyro um, we have two applications of super speed aka two applications of quickness with a single gyro again so between medic gyro and blast gyro we now have four applications of quickness so these are super efficient and these are things you never want to give up medic and gyro and blast gyro never give them up they are uh, just far too efficient so keep that in mind uh, we have spare capacitor coming from our shredder gyro uh, this is some cc as well as some free damage so we will basically be using this on cooldown as well as long as we know that a CC bar is not coming relatively soon. Um, if a CC bar is coming relatively soon, I definitely suggest you hold this and combo it with Rocket Charge for those free days leaps. Um, but besides that, if you don't, if you know CC is not coming, feel free to use that on cooldown. And last but not least, Function Gyro. Uh, like I said earlier, this is a great utility skill for getting your team off the ground if people are going down, but we can't use it our quickness is too tight if people down in this it's going to make your quickness harder to sustain because this is another source of super speed and if they lose super speed because they're downing well that's their fault isn't it so just tell your friends not to down <laughs> besides that this will be used on cooldown as well to make sure that we are giving full quickness up time and that's about it for our utilities um and all our different skills so uh, now how do we put it all together right so going into the boss um, we have our uh, opener which is basically just dumping everything we're gonna blow everything right and right off the bat that'll get a nice solid uh, chunk of quickness as long as we go through everything uh, properly blast gyro has a uh, a three second delay right it takes all this time one two three and then it finally goes off so this is something you can precast um, when you're charging into the fight feel free to pop that on the precast so I'm moving into the fight right and then from there we go into our rotation which is we're gonna start with our medic gyro our thunderclap and our shredder gyro and this will be a combo that we will use over and over again every time it comes off cooldown so we press Z, 5, C, which are my button combinations, right? But uh, Medic Gyro, Thunderclap, Shredder Gyro. Uh, this will make it so that the water field comes out first. And then we 5 and we see, and our Whirl will be procking off that water field. And we're giving out some free healing, as well as getting those three applications of super speed slash quickness off. Um, this will be damage, of course, but since it's also 20 seconds, it's really nice to loop in with all those abilities. So Z5C. After that, uh, we can go ahead and just press bypass coding whenever, right? Because that's instant. So make sure you are pressing that on cooldown. But make sure you are in combat when you press that, of course, because it is instant. So it can be very easy to miss versus these other guys having some delay. Uh, so just be very careful with that. Um, after that, we are going to be going into our standard combos, our standard rotation, which will be 
um, electro whirl and as soon as we electro whirl if you've played engineer you will be very very familiar every time you sword two you grenade two it's going to be the exact same concept here if you've played hollow you will be very intimate with this combo already every time we sword two in this case hammer two we are going to grenade two so we hammer two we go into grenade we grenade two and now uh, we have to start working on getting everything off. So as soon as we're done with our grenade tool, we'll do our grenade barrage. Our first tool belt skill right there, right? And then you kind of want to weave grenades with different abilities, right? Um, so we do that grenade tool. We do the grenade barrage. We're going to do our function gyro. We're going to throw out another grenade with poison. We're going to do our spare capacitor. And we're going to throw out another gate with our grenade with our freeze. So we're just kind of rotating through everything that we have left, right? Um, and then after that, we just go into that same loop over and over. We drop the grenade kit. We do auto attacks. Make sure you get that third hit. Auto attacks. Make sure you get that third hit. Whirl. Grenade two. And then keep doing that as always. Uh, that's going to be your bread and butter combo. Uh, auto attacking. Whirl. Grenade two. Um, and then with that, you can start just sort of weaving in everything else, right? So, um if uh z5 c is coming off cooldown you know as soon as you're done with that grenade too we go into z5 c um if a utility skill is coming off cooldown as soon as we're done with that grenade too we'll drop that function gyro we'll do that grenade barrage we'll do those other grenades we'll go back into there as soon as we're done we do that too and we drop that as well right so we just keep doing that over and over um but there's certain skills that aren't worth spitting out like crazy, which is something you have to keep in mind if you're trying to be very efficient with your DPS. Um, some of these skills are more high priority than others. Our Z5C combo is very, very high priority. You're never gonna wanna delay that, you know? So as soon as you can, after that shrapnel grenade, just get right into that combo. Um, Uh, but our high priority skills, of course, are going to be bycast coding. Just press it on cooldown. It's instant. Doesn't matter. Our Z5C, our blast gyro, our function gyro, and our grenade barrage. Those are the high priority skills, right? These are things that, as soon as we're done with that grenade, just start using all that stuff. Like, just, just throw it all out. All of it. <laughs> Make sure you use the blast, make sure you use the function, make sure you use the grenade barrage. Grenade barrage is a ton of HP, I mean, I'm sorry, a ton of damage. And then, of course, our gyros are more quickness, so we can't delay those. We can never delay the quickness, so. Um, but our freeze, our poison, and our spare capacitor are low priority skills. Um, and then our mortar kit uh, 2 as well. is a. Those are all low priority DPS. They're worth using. But they're not worth using over whirl and over grenade too. So if you have a low priority skill, you're only going to use one every time you go through this rotation, right? So uh, on the opener, we did use all of our grenades and we did use our spare capacitor. We got it all out. Um, but after that, you need to weave in one at a time, right? So if freeze grenade and poison grenade are both off cooldown, I'm going to do that whirl, I'm going to do that grenade, I'm going to throw one grenade, and then I'm going to go back and do it again. And then I can do another whirl, I can do that grenade, I can do the other grenade, and I'm going to go back and do it again. And then I'm going to do the whirl again, I'm going to do that grenade, I'm going to do spare capacitor, I'm going to go back and do it again. I'm going to do that other grenade, mortar kit, and then I go back and do it again. But I'm never going to use... Uh, multiple of those in a row. They're just not enough damage to, to be worth delaying electric whirl or to be worth delaying shrapnel grenade. These guys are too much damage. So uh, these two grenades, spare capacitor and mortar kit two, not a high priority. Only use one of them every chain. Um, as soon as you use one of them, go back into auto attacking, go back into that whirl, use another one in the next round. Um, not enough, right? So, but uh, again, keep in mind, that your gyros, your function gyro, your blast gyro, and your grenade barrage, those are all very high priority. Those are quickness, and that's a lot of damage. <laughs> so those are things we don't delay, as well as, of course, our Z5C combo. 
Um, so, you know, if I did that whirl and then I do the two and I see all this stuff is all cool down, I'm going to press all of it. Got to get it all. And then I will go back into my combo and I will do that nonsense again. Throw that one out, go back into the combo. Um, I don't have quickness on myself right now just because, of course, we would be a quickness giver. So I'm just kind of uh, doing that slower. Keep that in mind. That will <laughs> that will be a lot quicker if I'm actually giving quickness. Um, so hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, it's not, there's no solid static rotation. None of our, our abilities really line up perfectly like that. So we lined up what we could with our Z5 and C. We're always using those in conjunction, right? Um, and we're always using Electro Whirl with Grenade too. Those are always used in conjunction as well. Uh, everything else, you kind of have to be pretty flexible with your rotation and squeezing it in between your Electro Whirl and your Grenade too. Um, and making sure to use the stuff that you need to use to make sure that quickness doesn't drop because again this is support your main priority is quickness it always will be so keep that in mind um, if you have to mess up your rotation a little bit to use gyros that you haven't been using that is more important it is more important that five people get quickness than that you have a absolute perfect rotation so uh, keep that in mind and we'll be good to go um, one thing to note is that Obviously, raids are not as clean cut as a uh, golem is, right? So sometimes you're going to be running around doing mechanics. Um, I think it is still very important that you are using your skills properly, right? Your, your, your quickness skills properly. If I'm running around doing a mechanic, I still need to press these buttons. Uh, what that means is that when I come back to the boss, I might have thunderclap. These guys might be off cooldown. You don't want to delay it. Um, unfortunately, it will not be in sync with your Z and C anymore, right? But it is still a high priority skill. It is a ton of damage and it is still a very important that you're using it as much as you can off cooldown. So, you know, I'm running around doing mechanics. I press these buttons to give my friends quickness. I came back. Crap. Now it's off sync, but I have to use it anyway. Um, basically, what you're going to do with that is you're still going to squeeze it after your grenades, right? So I, I do my grenade two and my whirl and then i'm going to use five if it's up two whirl these guys are up so i'm going to use these and then i go into my combo again that just came off cooldown so no two whirl i'm going to use that this time and we're good to go so uh it keeps them off sync unfortunately um but it's more important that you're using them off cooldown and it's more important that you continue to give quickness uh than having an absolute perfect rotation so you kind of have to be flexible when you're raiding with this class versus other classes. Um, otherwise, you're just not going to be able to give good quickness, right? Unfortunately. So um, the uh, the function gyro and the bypass coding and the blast gyro, we're using those off cooldown. So those don't really mess with anything with our rotation. Uh, but using Z and C while you're doing mechanics can definitely throw a weird wrench into your rotation. But... It is what it is. We adjust, we give our quickness as best we can, and we move on from there. So um, go ahead and keep that in mind. Um, I did forget to mention food. So if you go to Snow Crows, which many people do, of course, uh, they will be suggesting that you use uh, power and furiosity food, which in this case would be uh, sweet and spicy butternut squash. I use cilantro. I have ascended food, you know, so it's there. Um, I personally like to crit cap. <laughs> so if you are not if you do not have spotter, you will not crit cap. So if I do not have spotter, I like to use curry butternut squash soup, which is precision furiosity, and that will help me crit cap. Um maybe it's a DPS loss, maybe Snow Crows figured it out, and it's still better just to take power furiosity. But I'm a stickler, I like to crit cap. Uh, I like that that pretty 100 seeing it there or in our case we're going to see 75 because of course we have the 25% extra from here uh, so I like using that crit cap food um, I have spotter on right now right here so as you can see I am at 75.09 so we are over crit capping by 0 0.09 when we have spotter um, but when we don't have spotter we're you know 5% under so I use I use spotterless food in that case and it gets me right back up to that 100.09% and we're good to go. Um, otherwise, use Power Furiosity food and you'll be fine. 
as well as uh, superior sharpening stones. Uh, feel free to get potent ones if you know you're going to be raiding for an hour. I think they're cheaper overall since they last an hour instead of half an hour. Um, but yeah, those are definitely going to be the main choice for that as well. Um, this is a great class to tank on. So I have an amulet here in the back burner with 157 toughness. This is a knight's amulet, power, precision, and heavy toughness. Um, and that 157 will be enough to beat any soul beasts you have with you that accidentally get 150 toughness. So I use this uh, when I'm tanking. Um, since we gained so much dang barrier, you really don't need more than that 157. But you can feel free to take more knights if you need to. Uh, you know, it's better safe than sorry. If you really feel like you're going to go down with, left with less toughness while you're tanking, then feel free to bring more toughness. Because this is a great class to tank with between all the barrier building, between the block on demand, um, between the protection, and uh, you know all that lovely other stuff that you're doing. Um, it's a great class for sustaining itself with. So uh, I definitely have tanked with this on a good few fights, and it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. So I suggest that if you uh, have any thoughts about it. Um, but besides that, that's the bulk of this build. Um, once you you know speed it up, things can get a little bit hectic between trying to manage everything. Let me just give myself quickness real quick. Uh, just all of them. Right. So I'm getting into the fight, I precast that, I do that with that with that, and then I go into my whirl with that, just weaving everything, and then I get into my combo, whirl, and I'm doing the things, right? And then I go into my Z, 5C, press that because we want to use that, whirl, grenade, 4, and we just go on alarm merry way. Use that and that. Um, that was an accident. So we're gonna do that, that, that. We're gonna drop Z5C, get that blast, whirl. So it, you can see it really doesn't have that perfect rotation. And I'm messing up a little bit here because I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Uh, but there's still a lot of adjustment. Use that while you're at it. Finish that chain, whirl, function gyro, two. Get that one grenade out, Z5C. Whirl, two, spare capacitor, blast. That's a high priority ability. We're not gonna delay our quickness, of course. Do that whirl. We have that one, we have a high priority, so we'll throw that one out. And we keep along that way, right? So, um, obviously that was a half health golem, so. Uh, you could you could very easily see that we're keeping up our tantrum there. Uh, we're very easily vulnerability capping, and I'm keeping up that beautiful, beautiful full-time quickness as long as I'm using all those sources off cooldown. Um, unfortunately, unlike other uh, quickness classes, we are forced into taking gyros, which is which is kind of unfortunate. It does hurt our DPS in that respect. So, uh, STM. Chrono and uh, Quickness Firebrand are beating us in the benches, um, but this is still completely viable damage. I think the current Snow Crows benchmark is around uh, 27k, uh, or just under that, like 26.5, something like that. So that's still very, very respectable damage, um, which was very, very, very much increased on May 25th. I think we used to have like 23k, so it's a very nice boost. Um, especially with being able to take medic gyro since we're not heal scrapper and uh, but being coiled into those gyros is kind of unfortunate when it comes to our DPS which means we have a lot of buttons to press to keep up that quickness we have to press these three gyros our function and our bypass coding as long as you're pressing those guys off cooldown you will keep up full-time quickness so uh, it's not too bad but it is what it is uh, we do what we can. At least we can finally bring the Master Race Hammer out. Because we all love hammers. So, um, but that's the basis of it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions or concerns, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below. Like I said, I will be coming out with a heal scrapper video within the next couple days to complement this DPS scrapper quickness. 
Um, so feel free to look forward to that. Feel free to like and subscribe so that you can keep uh, uh, an eye on that next video as well. And hopefully I'll see you then. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See some subscribers out there. And uh, we'll finally get hammers on the field as they deserve to be. Have a good night.